It is a surprisingly warm winter's day and I am making my way over the fields and far away to have a chat with you guys about what to take on the Hadrian's Wall National Trail. Eighty-four miles from Newcastle upon Tyne to Bowness on Solway, the Hadrian's Wall National Trail is a much loved, very, very valuable national trail here in the UK that follows the original route of the Hadrian's Wall itself. It goes through many archaeological discoveries, it goes through cities, petite villages, it's absolutely incredible and it's really, really worth walking. It's spring right now, I love spring, but I'm so excited because this is the time of year that you folks are planning your adventures for the coming six to eight months. And Hadrian's Wall needs to be on your list. If it's not, what are you doing? So what I wanna to do today is look at the kit that you could potentially take to walk the Hadrian's Wall National Trail. So I walked the trail in 2014. I made a film about the trail. If you want to find out more, it's in the link below. Definitely check it out. This is everything I would probably take. Uh, I'm actually not heading out to do the trail this year, but I wanted to run through everything I did take and just discuss its kind of uses and why I take it. Because everybody travels differently. Some people specifically focus on going lightweight. I focus on being functional. And of course I have to carry filming gear as well. That is not a criticism. That is an absolute compliment. I'm so privileged to be able to make trail videos about these different walks, but uh, this is everything I personally take. So what we're going to do is we're going to pack my pack because this is the Packing Your Pack series. And uh, any questions you've got, folks, please comment below. We'll get a discussion going or drop me a message on Facebook. You've got the Facebook link below as well. Or just drop me an email if you want to keep it that bit more personal. That's absolutely fine by me. I'm really, really keen to help out. This is what I'm passionate about is getting you guys spending more time in the wild. In the meantime, let's have a look at Kit. So the rucksack I will be taking on this walk is the Osprey Exos 48. Now it's 2018 right now, Osprey have released a brand new version of this rucksack, the Osprey Exos 2018. The only real difference is that the mesh is different on the front, it's not got side pockets, we're not going to get into that discussion right now, but this is a big enough backpack for me to carry everything that I need on the trail. I love this pack, it has done hundreds and hundreds of miles with me, can't go wrong, the only thing that gets a bit annoying is it's got a little bit of a squeak. <laughs> but this is my pack, it's called Little John, I love it. So, everything I need will fit in here. We can see this big blue blob on the bottom here. It's got a plane to contend with, but we're on the outside, you've got to work with it. This blue blob is actually a dry bag, and inside the dry bag is my tent. It's the Hilleberg Acto, so it's a pricey tent, but I absolutely love it. It's basically a one-person tent. I think it weighs 1.6 kilograms, but don't quote me on that. Watch the review if you'd like to know more about that tent and I just keep that strapped to the bottom. It's nice and easy to access. That could also act as an emergency, emergency shelter as well, because I could just take the outer layer and wrap myself up in that. So I'm not carrying an emergency shelter. Not that I necessarily need one for this trail because it's not crazy exposed, but it's certainly something worth bearing in mind, especially if you're more experienced at this and you want to kind of have kit for emergencies that potentially other people are involved in. Let's pack the pack, shall we? So. Opening the lid, we're going to start in the main compartment. This is where the majority of my stuff goes. So what I've got first of all is this big orange bag. This is not an emergency bivvy. It's just a plastic bag for literally like 99p off eBay. So I tend to keep this inside the rucksack and what that just means is everything's nice and kept together. A lot of people don't do this anymore, especially as, as you can see, I've kind of colorized everything in dry bags. Uh, so for me, I just do like to have that extra layer of protection. I've been out in some pretty foul weather on these trails and this just means things are just that a little bit more likely to stay dry. So we'll pop that inside. In fact, no, we won't. We will pop this inside of this. This, my friends, is my sleeping bag. It's in a dry bag, which is in a compression thing to compress it, <laughs> believe it or not. Inside the sleeping bag itself is a sleeping bag liner. That just means A, if it gets too hot, I can just sleep in the liner, and B, it's just giving me that extra layer of insulation if it's too cold. Uh, this sleeping bag itself is three seasons, I believe. It's not the lightest out there in the world. This is a pretty old school sleeping bag. I think it's like six or seven years old now. All the down's coming out, but I love it. It's seen me through Kilimanjaro. Um, the sun has disappeared. <laughs> it's seen me, you know, winter walking and summer walking, and I just, I value trusted pieces of kit that has performed. So this is the sleeping bag. This goes in the bottom. 
and then this goes in the rucksack. Oh, how I wish that was it. <laughs> Sometimes what I might do if I'm walking in conditions that are more likely to display winter scenarios is I'll take an extra bivy. So that's uh, another layer that I could have put on top of my sleeping bag, again, to aid insulation, but also consideration of things like condensation. So the tunnel design tent, which is the Hilleberg itself, um, often have a lot of condensation, even though I try and pitch it well, I still get that moisture inside my tent. So by having that extra layer that's waterproof on the outside of my sleeping bag, that just protects me as well. But in the summer, I don't generally take a bivy. In fact, it's over there. I decided to take it out because I just didn't think it was a talking point, but here I am talking about it. So bivy, that's something you could consider. Also acts as another emergency sheltery thing as well, if that's something you'd want to consider. Packing your pack itself, it's always important to try and keep the weight towards the back. Uh, so that your center of gravity is central <laughs> and obviously to make sure everything's comfortable different backpacks are different this one here has got this airscape mesh so actually the pack itself doesn't sit against me but i don't want anything digging in because that's just going to be a hot spot it's going to rub it's going to be uncomfortable no one likes that because i will be unhappy and that's never a good thing so that's something to consider but equally i pack my backpack exactly the same every single time without fail so i know if something is missing it's just something doesn't feel right i'm like something's missing and then i find it so that's something else to bear in mind this will come through experience if this is your first trail pack your pack unpack it pack your pack unpack it pack your pack unpack it then head out see how you go try new things use different pieces of kit if you don't use it on the trail don't bring it again everything i have here i will use multiple times and that's exactly why i carry it enough talk let's look at the kit jet boil this here is a cooking device it boils water in two minutes really so inside of here it's very compact we've got the jet boil gas itself we've got the stove that sits on the bottom and just a little tripod to raise it up off the ground if you need that so you put the water in there turn it on and it boils the water and then i can add that to my meals which we'll have a look at in a minute on the side here i have an extra lighter that's always encouraging isn't it <laughs> yeah there we go we've got a flame and that's just in case the trigger point on the system here goes because that has failed me a few times so that's just a backup sometimes i'll carry matches as well just in case the lighter fails and then on the bottom here i have a bowl which it sits in the jet boil itself does come with a bowl but mine's cracked and then i bought another one and it didn't fit so i didn't want to waste money and i just put this there so that's what i'll cook in that sits right there next to that all along the back of the back pack is my roll mat so this is a thermarest venture i think it's quite old school again uh it's got a leak in the valve so it doesn't stay pumped up the entire night but it works for me at the moment so this is the roll mat obviously very important to have something to sleep on to aid insulation and also comfort so i put that in here next to the jet boil okay this here is my wash kit and travel towel i've just got toothpaste toothbrush a little bit of shampoo, as I say, travel towel. Um, what are those things called? Hygiene wipes. Yep, <laughs> they're always useful. So that's really doesn't weigh anything at all. It's quite bulky though with the travel towel, but that's just kept in a dry bag. So I'll pop that in the front. Up next, this kind of this is where it varies a little bit of what I put in depending on what a day looks like. But if the weather's going to be really dry, then the next thing I'll put in is this, which is my ankle gaiters and my waterproof trousers. Not the biggest waterproof trouser fan, but a little tip with those if you're buying some, I definitely recommend having them. Again, extra layer, but also protection is to buy some that have a zip all the way up so that you can ventilate and you can also get your boots on and off. But I've also got gaiters in there. They're my ankle gaiters. I am a big fan of ankle gaiters in winter sort of weather just because they just prolong the cleanness of your trousers and then you can wear them for a few more days and not worry about getting mud inside of your tent. So that's going in there. Shove it all in. There's a lot of shoving going on today. Next up will be this. So this is my food pack. Hadrian's Wall, 89 miles or 84 miles. My brain's just gone blank. Four days I've walked this trail in, or that's what we walked it in in 2014, but some people might want to take five or six days just because there really is a lot to see on this trail. And guys, don't rush it. Enjoy the time that you have out and about. Enjoy the time 
traveling on the trail, just breaking the day down into walking and exploring new things. So don't rush it. We did it in four days. Would have been nicer to do it in five, but this is the food that I took. So let's have a quick look at this. Get that out of the way for a minute. So I keep it all nice and compact in a dry bag, obviously keeping the air out. Here we go. Calories. <laughs> so what have we got then? Evening meals. I have two dehydrated ration packs. These are exactly the same, vegetarian because I'm veggie. These are probably the cheapest on the market at the moment here in the UK. They're about £4.50 from Go Outdoors. Uh, they've got 600 calories and they're basically designed to have a healthy balance between protein, fats and carbs. Uh, they take eight minutes, you just add water, let them sit, it cooks or warms up anyway, and then you eat it. That's the best part. So I've got those, that's two evening meals. We're starting evening to morning. And then the other two nights, I've got these, just packets of couscous from Lidl's. They cost 40p, <laughs> pretty cheap really, aren't I? And they've got about three to 400 calories in. So I'll have those. And on the nights that I have those, I tend to partner them with something like a Horlicks drink which is 200 calories, or a mushroom soup, which went off in August last year. <laughs> so uh, I've got a couple of those just to partner them up and keep the calories up. There we go, thought I had another more looks. So that's evening meals. So I'll eat them when I get to camp. I tend to structure my evening meals so I have something warmer before going to bed. So say I had the couscous, I might get my tent up, get unpacked, have a quick wash, then I'll eat the couscous, and then I'll have a mushroom soup a couple of hours later. And then right before going to bed, I'll have the drink. And it's just trying to structure that, keep my metabolism up, uh, but also nice and comfortable as well. So during the day then, what I'll have is just basically an array of cereal bars. I just grabbed what I actually had in my house at the moment, but this will vary. So sometimes I use those squares bars, uh, which are the Rice Krispies because they're really light and they're full of sugars. So that's great. Uh, other times I use these, the saurine loaves, the banana banana all the way. They're just nice and squidgy so it doesn't really matter if they get squished. I just open that, I have to eat that, shame. <laughs> uh, and then other times I'll use these sort of Velveeta breakfast things. Again, really light. Weight is the key thing to consider here. Uh, so that's kind of what I'll eat in the day. So we'll pop them in. And what we'll see in a minute is I'll plan ahead the food that I want to eat actually on the trail, I'll put in the hip pocket and I've got some out already to show you. I'm just going to wait for this helicopter go, to go by and then we'll talk about breakfast. So breakfast then, what we've got, or what I've got even, sorry guys, get your own, is uh, I tend to have these like morning oats, golden syrup, got some sugar in, sweet, easier to eat when you've just woken up and you wish you weren't awake. So that's those. And then I'll partner them with some little packets of raisins. So breakfast kind of sits at about 250 calories. With regards to calorie content, uh, or how many calories I'm eating, sorry, I don't eat enough on the trail. I'm not shy of admitting that. I tend to look at the trail that I'm gonna be walking and consider are there any stores along the way that I could pop into. And if I go there, I will buy fruit and vegetables because vitamin supplements and just upping the nutrients that I'm actually eating is very important because this is kind of a carb fest and I would rather not just live off carbs forever. But equally, if I'm out, you know, in autumn, uh, whenever I'm out, to be honest, I'll be keeping my eye open for wild edibles, blackberries, blueberries, um, I don't know, nettle, anything really. I'll just munch as I go, to be honest. And for some reason, I have an apple. So there we go. I think that was just a reminder to talk about that. So sometimes, yep, I'll buy things on the trail. If, I, if there's no nowhere to go, like the Pennine Way and Offers Dyke, there's just a bit more remote, then I will obviously consider what I'm taking a little bit differently. So that there, food bag. We got there in the end. Let's pop that in. See, it's filling up. Just trying to work with the sun today. It's coming in and out behind the clouds, but that's all right. Lovely day, really. Okay, so next up, what we're gonna look at is this big old bag. Now, this is the bulkiest thing that I carry. Arguably, it doesn't need to be this bulky, but I, again, it's just a talking point. So in here, I've got my clothing. So I have an extra layer or extra pair of clothes. So I've got another pair of walking trousers and another wicking shirt. I think for Hadrian's wall, because it's four days, there's a potential that I wouldn't need to carry a spare layer, especially if the forecast is good. But you have to consider, just because it's a sunny day, you still could potentially get wet because A, passing showers, or B, you're sweating. So it's nice to have that change of clothes. 
Some people, and often I do, sleep in their spare change of clothes, but also just for the sake of conversation, I've put in a pair of shorts and another t-shirt. Nothing is cotton, folks, just gonna put that out there. That's all in here and I'll sleep in that. I've got a hat that I'll sleep in, which is a woolly hat, and I have an extra jumper. So that's all in there. You can see it's quite bulky. I tend to roll things up to try and keep them compact. I ram them on in and then I shut the, uh, the dry bag around that. So this tends to just go up on the top, basically wherever I can fit it in. Let's see what we can do here, shall we? And just as I'm packing this, you'll notice everything is stuff that I will have in my tent. So I can do all of this in the shelter of my tent. If the weather's bad, then nothing needs to get wet because it's all inside, I'm inside, I'm packing up. And by the time I get out of my tent, the only thing I'll need to do is put my tent itself away. And again, I can protect that from moisture if it's raining because I can take down the inner layer, pop that one away separately to the outer layer, which will be the wet one hopefully the only wet one, and uh, put that one away as well. So I can keep everything nice and dry right till the end. Okay, so that's that. Up next, snuggled to the side, is my first aid kit. This is quite a bulky first aid kit, actually just because I had it packed for mountain stuff. Uh, so what I've got in here is two separate compartments. The first one's kind of tablets, paracetamol, ibuprofen, heat gels and stuff. Uh, what else have we got in there? I've got some multivitamins, got some energy tablets, got some diorolite. I don't just pack a first aid kit for myself. For me, it's important that I have enough spare for other people. And then the other half, I've also got plasters, blister plasters. I've got padding in case I get any rubbing against the straps on my skin, especially if it's warmer weather. It's worth considering that you're going to have less layers, so there's uh, less protection against the rucksack in yourself. So that's just kind of all in there. Uh, tweezers, scissors, everything you can need in a first aid kit is there. Any issues, I'll save you guys. <laughs> so pop that one in and that's at the top so it's nice and accessible. I haven't always kept my first aid kit at the top. I've never really needed it if I'm honest, um, but for me, I'm trying to get in the habit of keeping it so it's very quickly accessible. Although, as you can see, it's so easy just to get this stuff out. It's not really a problem if it was here compared to here. So something worth considering anyway. And then really, the last things that I'll stuff into the main compartment, we're getting there, eh, is this, which is a synthetic jacket lined with non, or just like, what's the word? Felt, there we go. So it's just a nice jacket. You've probably seen me wearing that out and about. So pop that one in there. I just fill in the gaps, make sure I'm utilizing all the space that I've got. And then finally, there's my waterproof jacket, accessible on the top, just in case I need it. So, oh, get out spider in my bag get that out <laughs> pop this in Ugh. starting to look like a rucksack now don't you think and then I take over the top flap I tuck that in keep everything in place I pull the strap epic moment boom we're done in the main compartment just next up just because they're there I've got my bottles so I'll have one two flasks aluminium flasks and this I tend to take, although not always. This is my water to go bottle. This basically has a built-in filter so that you can pour pretty much any kind of water in there, pop the lid on eventually, have a drink, and you know it's clean. Water to go, really, really good company. Absolutely love what they do. They're ethical. They're all about water conservation uh, and they make these bottles which are really quite a good deal if I'm honest so I'll take that I use that a lot on the Ridgeway just because there was lots of water taps it's supposed to be potable but it's always nice just to be that little bit more sure so pop them in the side I take every opportunity to drink as much as I can on the trail just to protect my head you sweat a lot more than you would on a normal day and I just generally drink a lot more than normal people anyway <laughs> So the bottom of the top, what I put in here is, here we go. This is my head torch. I don't have to keep it in here, but I keep spare batteries with it and apparently a random plastic bag. As you can see, it doesn't work. A little tip there, flip around the top battery so that it's not gonna turn on in your bag. Always keep that in the same place so you know what it is, where it is for quick access. Keep that in there. Also, the most life-saving of all pieces of equipment the spork, keep that in there, never know when you might need it. Uh, and generally speaking, that's kind of everything I put in there, just anything I want to really. Sometimes I put my wallet in there, but that's the bottom of the top. So I'll clip this up, 
hopefully. Okay, one clip, two clip, pull it tight. Right, top of the top, we've got this big pocket here. So this varies again. What I've got today to show you is this kind of thermal bag. Again, I really probably don't need this. It does weigh a chunk. I don't think it, yep, 180 grams, 180 grams. So I could take this, I could take a blizzard bag, I could take my bivy, uh, but I've just got this again as a conversation point and I put this somewhere so it's accessible. So that's that. I've also got hand gel just for hygiene. I've got heat rub, my injured trap. That's very important to me. I often have ibuprofen gel in there as well, just so again, I can use that. And also bite cream, antiseptic cream, all things that you can consider whether to keep them in your first aid kit or whether you want them accessible. So that's what I'll put in there. Also sun cream. <laughs> I wish. And this stuff here, this is a little pot of electrolyte tablets. I tend to have one of these every day alongside a multivitamin tablet. And that just keeps me alive <laughs> from my carb fest. And then just on the side of here, I got some duct tape because you just never know when you'll need that. So that's in there, a nice compliment. And the final thing I'll pop in the top is this dry bag. In here, I've got my car keys because I probably would have parked somewhere or house keys anyway and my wallet and I've got a small New Testament book just because reading content and I've also got a charger as well a portable charger so that I can plug in my camera kit or my phone I can't seem to get that away right now but there we go so that's what's in there see how quickly that was accessible ram it in and that's the top pocket zip here we go, we're getting there folks. Front pocket, we've got this big stretchy mesh thing. This is a nice addition, I love this on this rucksack. I use this a lot. It's great just to stuff clothing in if you take it off. Um, just easy access, especially if you're walking with someone, it's always nice to be like, mate, just shove it in my pack. So stretchy front pocket. What I put in here is, oh, here we go. This is all information for the trail. If you're walking the trail, you probably have had to find a way to get to the start and you'll probably have a way to get to the end there may be information about campsites or b&b's or hostels that you're staying at i've also got a notebook i like to write at the end of each day and that just helps with my presenting and when it comes to editing the films that i make i've also got here this is the hadrian's wall national trails guidebook so this is what we used when we walked the, tra walked the trail it's kind of broken down the mileage it's got sections of os maps in here it's also got a lot of information. If you really want to save yourself some weight, you could buy the map itself, which just follows the trail, uh, but you could also just print it out and follow that. But don't zoom in too closely. It's always nice to know about different trails around you, just because if there are any diversions, then you know where you've gone. <laughs> I've been caught out a few times on different trails. So also in the front then, just grab everything. I've got flip-flops. I keep these in a plastic bag because they often get wet. These are just what I wear around camp. Shove them in there. Arguably don't need them. I could just use my boots, but it's quite nice if it's been really, really wet. I can just air my feet a little bit. I've got a cup. Arguably don't need that because I've got the jet boil, the, uh, the bowl. I could drink out of that, but it's nice to have a drink and food. What sits in here is my little pack of GoPro stuff. So it's just loads of different batteries. It's got my waterproof cover in there. Although often I keep that in my pocket and really that's just it, GoPro stuff in there. And then the final thing is this dry bag, which is full of, well, let's have a look, shall we? We're doing a comprehensive breakdown, so we <laughs> may as well. I've got some thicker gloves. Probably, I just grabbed these ones. I probably would take something thinner, actually, because these are my mountain gloves. You can see just how thick they really are. <laughs> Something's gone wrong if I'm getting that cold, I feel. I've got a buff, always nice, extra protection for the neck. I've got my hat. Enough said. I've got a spare plastic bag and I thought I had, I do have, here we go, some fingerless gloves. I pretty much always wear these to be honest. Um, they just mean I can access my camera stuff quite easily and they keep my hands warm. And then often what I'll keep in here when I'm actually walking is the microphone that I'm recording myself with now. So I use the Rode Video Mic Pro and I'll keep that in here which stays in the front so it's all nice and accessible. Roll that one up. I didn't empty the air very well of that. And then often as well, the tripod that I'm on 
or that you're on <laughs> at the moment um, is a really lightweight Manfrotto, I think it's a Manfrotto tripod that I sit here and then strap this over the top, pull it tight, and then I've got a tripod. Arguably you don't need a tripod, but it's just nice for me, um, especially with sponsors and stuff. I want to get pictures of me and their kit, so I need a tripod. I don't really walk with anybody else half the time, so it's very useful for me. We're nearly there, folks. Final, final, final couple of pockets are these little ones here. You're pleased to know they can't hold much. There's not that much to talk about. Lip salve's already in there. Packet of tissues, sometimes useful if you don't want to snot everywhere. And as I say, I keep some food accessible for the day itself. So I've got a couple of cereal bars. Pop that in there. Just saves time. I tend to do quite big mileages, you know, 20 plus miles each day. Uh, it just means that I can save time, not have to stop. I can just eat and walk at the same time. The other side, absolute essential, is a compass. I've got a pacing chart and I've got some pacing beads. Don't carry a compass if you don't know how to use it. Don't walk without a compass. So there we go. That's the one thing you need to do is learn how to use a compass. <laughs> Otherwise it's a bit pointless. So the final, final things then, I keep saying that, but this is legit the truth is I film on a GoPro during the day. So this is GoPro 3 Plus Silver. I am looking to upgrade my camera gear uh, very, very soon, but I'm trying to do a little bit of fundraising for that. So if you'd like to support my cause, please check out the donation link below. There is absolutely no pressure there, but you will be the biggest legend in my life if you do, even just 50p, boom. Anyway, GoPro. So I tend to hold that like this or like this. I shoot with a head strap. So they can even go on my head or I tie it around trees and stuff and that just keeps it there. So that's the GoPro. And then I also shoot on a Canon 70D, which is what I'm filming on at the moment. So longer trails, I do take this DSLR just because I want to get higher quality images and video. So that sits in here. Uh, what I will be doing very soon is a video talking about the different ways to carry camera gear when you're actually out on the trail because everybody's different. Some people use a clip, which I sometimes do. Some people use a bag, which I sometimes do. Some people use Neva and have other ways, which I sometimes do. So we'll have a chat about that another time. But until then, guys, Hadrian's Wall, 84 miles of pure archaeological, geological, geographical epicness. You have to do it if you've not done it. This is everything I'll take. Any questions, drop me a comment below. Drop me a message on Facebook. Drop me an email. Share your stories. Let's hear what you're passionate about. Let's hear about your time in the wild. And until then, enjoy your adventures. Hey, it's me again. I just wanted to show you the setup. So camera gear is here on my front, bag is on my back. The only other thing I forgot to mention was about a waterproof layer. So I tend to put a cover over my rucksack and that just gives me extra protection from my camera gear if I need to fit this inside of there. And equally, the clothes I'm wearing. I've got a soft shell that breathes, nice and breathable under the armpits, walking trousers that ventilate, and walking boots. So that's what I'll be wearing. These boots are quite light. Hadrian's Wall is not that rugged a terrain. You go through cities, so you could potentially walk it in walking shoes, but these are kind of walking shoe, walking boot hybrids. So they're nice and light and they work well for me. Now we've done everything. We got there in the end. Enjoy your adventures, guys. Stay wild.